I have seen some horrific things in my time, nothing quite as horrific as some of the yoga poses that I have seen be recommended to those struggling with lower back pain. Most of the time we are told to stretch, stretch and stretch and I'm going to tell you that although there is some truth to that, in general that information will only cause your lower back pain to flare up, meaning your back will feel worse. I'm going to show you two movements that you need to be doing regularly in order to improve the movement and function of your lower back and to reduce pain. The first exercise is the cat-cow exercise. Now, the purpose of this movement is to reduce friction in your spine. We're going to achieve that by mobilizing the spine. Now, I don't want you to confuse this with flexibility or an exercise in flexibility. All you want to do is move the spine very gently. You can see I'm not looking for end range. I'm not going as far as I can. I don't want to treat this exercise as a stretch. Remember, it's a mobility exercise. The focus on enhancing mobility and movement, not flexibility. I'll start on all fours, my knees in line with my hips, my wrists in line with the shoulders. I'm just going to arch my back very lightly. If I was to measure this out of 10, it's a four or five out of 10. And then I'm just going to tuck in the chin and then round the back. And I just continue. This is round number two. Now all I'm going to do is around five or six rounds. Breathe in and breathe out. Now the research has shown that five or six rounds is all you need to reduce some of that friction that can build up in the tissues in and around your lower back. Five or six rounds will be enough. Leave it at that and then move on to the other exercise. The second exercise is broken down into two individual exercises. The first one is a stretch for your iliacus, which is one of the muscles that bend your hip. I'm going to start in this uh, lunge position. You can see my uh, knee in line with the uh, heel and my back knee is slightly further back than the hip. The first thing I'm going to do is tip my hip backwards. So that's essential in what we're trying to achieve. So I don't want to go into the stretch from here. I can just overcook, overdo things and I still don't feel a stretch anywhere. If I tip my pelvis backwards, squeeze the backside and now I can't go any further because I'm stretching that iliacus muscle. I'm going to stay tall, I don't want to collapse and I just want to drop my right shoulder back as if I'm creating a very light back bend and I'm just going to ease off. Take a deep breath, when you're ready go again. So squeeze, tip backwards, stay nice and tall, go forward raise the arm up and create that very, very gentle back bend and feel that stretch in your hip. And that is the stretch for your iliacus muscle. You want to do this stretch three or four times on your right side and switch over to your left side. Once we've done that, come back to your right side and we're now going to stretch our psoas muscle, which is pretty much the same thing, but we're just going to add a lateral flexion or a side bend to the movement. So tipping that pelvis backwards, squeeze the backside, again chest up, tip forward, raise the right arm up and reach high. Now drop the left hand down to the side and then drop the right shoulder back. And ease off. Oh, I felt that. So. The previous stretch for my iliacus was very localized. Now this stretch is coming up slightly further, stretching all the psoas tissue as it attaches to my spine. So once again, tip the pelvis backwards, squeeze the right backside, my hip goes forward, that's enough. Raise the right arm, reach high, 
Now, when I drop my left hand to the side, don't lean forward, just drop the left hand. There we go. Drop the right shoulder back. Oh, and ease off. What a stretch. Once you've done three or four rounds on your right side, do three or four rounds on your left side and then you are done. Get up if you can, go for a walk and just try to loosen up the tissues in and around your hip. You will find that doing only these two exercises daily, twice a day if you can, I do mine in the morning at least an hour after waking up, not in that hour window with your, when, sorry, when your spine is hydrated and it's much harder to mobilize. So I do it an hour after waking up and then later on in the afternoon, just to make sure that my hours of sitting down on the desk isn't starting to catch up with me and is going to affect the way I feel for the rest of the day. Adding these two exercises or stretches to my daily routine has completely changed my physical life. For those of you who know me know how long I've suffered with back pain. A lot of the time because my pelvis tips forward and puts a lot of pressure on my lower back and I was also ill-advised to stretch the spine that's not what you want to do. As I've shown, you want to mobilize with gentle movement. You want to stretch your hips and over time, you are looking to actually stabilize the spine through strength and stability work rather than looking to excessively bend the spine. If your back pain persists, I would recommend that you see a practitioner of sorts who can do a thorough assessment and help you determine what movements are creating your pain. The art is to try and remove the very movement that is creating your back pain on a daily basis. If you can't remove that particular movement because it's part of who you are and what you do on an everyday basis, can you make your spine more robust so it can tolerate the stress? That is the key to managing and dealing with long-term back pain. Thank you for watching. As always, if you uh, would like me to help you in any way or if you would like to ask me any questions, you can contact me on the email below. Otherwise, subscribe if you are new and I will see you soon.